And Yam is the CEO and co-founder of Parlant, an exciting open source framework to create robust user-ready service agents. Yam, good morning. Hey guys, uh, am good I audible? for you. Am I audible? Yep, I'll let you take it away. Great, uh, so let me just share my screen. Good to go. Let's see, it's full screen. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, see my presentation, yeah? Okay, mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's nice to meet everybody. Uh, my name is Jan, I'm uh, the CEO of MC and uh, also happen to be one of the tech leads of Parlant, which uh, hopefully some of you have heard about by now. Um, now, in this talk, uh, basically what I'll be sharing is some insight that we picked up from working with and advising some of the largest companies in the world. So uh, stick around if you want to hear the what I would say is like the truth about building conversational AI, at least at the enterprise level. Um, now, the first thing I want to say is that if there's one thing that we always see is that everybody's boss thinks that building conversational AI is going to be easy. Uh, you may have seen that uh, for yourself. Uh, so the reason this happens is because, you know, we're all flooded with marketing messages telling me, uh, telling us that if, you know, if we pay some company, some vendor, uh, some amount of money, then we'll be able to deploy real good conversational agents today. But um, in reality, what we're seeing is that everybody's still tr basically trying to figure out how to deliver a real next gen agent. Um, well, I would say doing a half decent job at it at best. And in my opinion, that's just the truth based on uh, what we're seeing in practice. So what I wanna talk about today is why is this so hard? So the first thing that's really crucial to understand <clears throat> is that if you're operating at the enterprise level and you're building an agent that communicates with your customers, you really can't afford any lack of precision whatsoever. Now, the problem with LLMs is that it's not just about how often they get it wrong, but the more serious problem is that you don't know just how wrong they're gonna get it. So for example, if you have a banking agent, it could easily tell a client that the transaction was processed when it wasn't, or uh, alternatively like that it wasn't processed when it actually was. And this is really super common stuff that you have to deal with when building these agents. And there really aren't any trivial solutions, uh, at least not ones that don't completely degrade the user experience to where you're not actually getting an LLM experience anymore. So to touch on a few of the technical reasons why this is so hard, we need to understand that an LLM is not a logical thinking machine, but basically a very sophisticated pattern matcher. So when it generates outputs, it generates them token by token, or you can think about it as word by word to simplify. And every time it generates a token, it has to choose the right one between roughly 200,000 different ones. So 200, 200,000 uh, is actually the vocabulary size of GPT-4. And uh, what you slowly come to realize as you're building is that you're just not going to get it to generate the right next token every single time. And this becomes an even bigger issue when you provide it with a lot of custom instructions at the same time, as it essentially, what it does is it evens out the probability distribution of the next token, which you can think of as lowering the focus or basically inducing ADHD-like symptoms on the model. And uh, I mean, I, I guess we can sympathize it, uh, sympathize, sympathize with it in those cases. So what you have to do is you have to find ways to manage its attention span. So basically to keep its uh, so-called cognitive load um, low enough for the task at hand. Um, now, an important thing to keep in mind here is that the task at hand is not necessarily, uh, let's say completing a transaction, but it's really to take some the, the right action at this point in a conversation and generate the correct new message in it as well. So it's it's a smaller it's a smaller problem to solve, but it's still very difficult. Um, now, because we talk regularly, I know our company uh, we talk regularly with a lot of engineers in the field. Some of which are uh, you know trying to uh, basically contributing to Parlin. Some some of them are using it. Some of them are considering. Uh, we've built up by now a pretty good picture of what's going on in the market today and where the challenges are. And to be fully honest, and we've been through a lot of these same rabbit holes ourselves too in the beginning. So there are four main approaches that people take in different places. 
Uh, let me cover them briefly because chances are you're probably working on the same approach <laughs> where you are or one of them. Um, so the first one is using a system prompt. Uh, so basically capturing all your instructions in a system prompt and then letting the LLM API, like for example, OpenAI, uh, to generate the next message every time based on that initial system prompt. Now, <clears throat> the problem with this is that if you've seen it yourself by now, it's really, really poor at capturing your semantics and rules. So the resulting accuracy is basically always horrible. And I, I would say it's just super unfit for scale, you know, if, if you care even just a little bit about your accuracy. Now, uh, where we usually see this happening a lot is in companies that are trying to build real-time voice-to-voice agents, uh, which, uh, uh, at least in my opinion, I think uh, if that's what you're trying to do today, um, I really think you need to reconsider what you're working on right now and what you want to deploy in the next year, uh, because that, I mean, this is just my opinion. I, I don't think anybody's going to be releasing high-quality voice-to-voice agents at an enterprise scale in the next three years. Um, now I'm happy to talk, uh, you know, and explain why that is in person in more depth, uh, but that's kind of beyond beyond the scope here. Um, now the, the next approach that is very common is uh, using a Q and A bot, like uh, deploying a Q and A bot to your customers using RAG, which is augmented generation. Um, this actually is, you can make this work pretty well by now. Um, so if that's what you're working on, that's great. And the only thing is that it's uh, it's a very limited approach, so it can't really do customer service, and it's also very passive. So it depends on your users to tell the tell your agent exactly what they want and and uh, what they want to know about, etc. Which is once again is not what you really want with customer service, which needs to be more proactive and handhold and help the users fix the problem with its own knowledge. Um, so the next common approach is fine tuning, and the problem with fine tuning, and again, I'm happy to expand on this more in person if you're interested. But basically, uh, you're going to get limited results depending on how you're using it and what you're using it for. But uh, if you're using it for the conversational setting, then basically you'll get uh, you're going to get limited results. It's going to be expensive and it's going to take a lot of effort. Um, and perhaps the uh, the most common approach is so modeling your conversation as part of a graph or a flow chart. Now, um, this is like I said, very common, but what not many people talk about enough is that it imposes actually imposes too much structure in a conversation and that hurts you um, in in a few different ways which leads me to my next point which is uh, what we call the myth of the happy path so one thing that we've learned by working with uh, one of the uh, more uh, the larger banks in the world is that real customers don't want to and don't tend to follow neat step-by-step -step patterns in the conversation so what happens if you try to force them down those paths, basically like older bots have been doing for the past eight years, then uh, long story short, you're just going to lose them. And um, so the thing is, uh, you probably lose them very fast. And even worse, you're not going to get them to try your agent again for another year because they'll remember, oh, I tried that and it sucked. <laughs> um, now, I, uh, I actually recently heard a conversation design specialist label this phenomenon as uh, what he calls emotional debt which I thought was a good way to understand this. So uh, basically, um, if you care about what's called containment, um, so containment is essentially the ratio of how many conversations are handled by the AI instead of being routed to a human representative, then I, I would really suggest for you at this point to avoid modeling your agent on what's basically a legacy usage pattern at this point. Um, now here I want to give you a personal example of, uh, of something that does work well. So I, uh, I recently, just a few days ago, actually, I had a billing problem with some, some of my uh, service, service, some service provider that I use. And uh, I was quite frustrated at some unintended charge that I got. So I opened up their customer support page and was immediately directed to a bot. Now, uh, since the issue was on, right on my mind, I basically described the whole thing in one message, uh, as, as you would. Uh, so like the whole issue and what I wanted them to help me with, uh, but at the same time, I was skeptical. So before I sent that message, I, I copied it, uh, basically thinking that the bot will probably force me through an annoying series of steps before it transferred me to a human rep. So at least I'd have my real issue ready to be pasted into the human chat. However, um, so to my surprise, the AI immediately responded with new ones. Um, so it didn't force me through any steps. It just recognized and validated my issue. 
Um, now, because it wasn't an advanced agent, it did in fact quickly transfer me to a human agent, but still that initial experience of not having to get funneled down a stencil was what kept me in the chat box throughout the conversation until I resolved the matter. Um, now, if the AI could actually solve my issue end to end, that you know, I would have been super happy about that. But basically what I'm saying is that's exactly the kind of user experience that we should be looking to build today. So now the question is, how do we build it? Um, well, uh, because it's difficult, what we have to do is to strategize and not go for the first thing that may come to our mind or that we may read about somewhere, which trust me, I know for Sam is sometimes the hardest thing to do. Um, but I personally would really like to implore you <laughs> not to do that if you really want to deliver cool stuff soon. Um, so we basically need to prioritize and understand what's really important uh, when building our agent. And the first thing is that, um, well, as the tech leads from the bank we're working with said, that he would take a 1% one, 1 increase in precision, even if it means 10% less recall or even more. What that means is, especially if you're operating at scale, is you prefer not to say anything. And you know, if needed, you transfer them to a human agent than to actively mislead your customers. That's much more harmful. It's much more damaging. Um, so this is why uh, I think it's better to build one thing after another, like one use case after another, support it in your bot in a reliable manner than to try to release a whole bunch of features with 99% accuracy, which, uh, like I said before, essentially means thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of unbounded problems per month that you're going to have to deal with. Um, now, to build something reliable is actually easier than you might think, especially at an enterprise setting where most customer conversations are actually quite repetitive in nature. Now, by that, I don't mean that every conversation flows down the same conversational path, not at all actually, but that the problems people are trying to solve repeat themselves. And you can use this to your advantage because what it means that, so A, there are only so many things that your agent needs to be able to address and respond to. And the important thing is that it responds directly and fluidly rather than forcing the flow of the conversation, basically making the customer feel unheard. So they may have specified you know, what their issue was and then the agent just was like, sorry about that. And then it keeps asking a bunch of questions that it already got the answer to, right? And the second thing that you can leverage is that your business experts probably already know what those common use cases are and they can work with you to model them in what can, potentially be a matter of, of weeks, and, and that can actually be realistic. Um, however, what it also means is that you need a system that allows you to do this kind of iteration with your business experts in an efficient manner. So you can basically incorporate their feedback quickly, easily, and reliably on an ongoing basis. Um, so it sounds crazy because so many teams today are you know, spending months or sometimes even years trying to get to 90% accuracy or higher when it's really not anywhere near good enough anyway. Uh, where in practice, with a little bit of teamwork, and setting the right priorities carefully and having the right system to implement them, you can actually get to a next-gen agent in just a few months. Yeah, and time um, check. Uh, you have two minutes left. Two minutes, that's great. Uh, so an agent that your customers are actually going to love, just as I personally like my recent experience, despite the fact it was quite limited. Um, so that actually brings me, of course, to Parlance which is the open source system that we've created to allow you to incorporate that business feedback smoothly into your agents and to do some data-driven iteration to improve it with a better version every three weeks. Um, so yeah, having said all of that, I, uh, I would like to invite you to check out our website. And of course, if you're looking for feedback or advice, then feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to chat. Thank you.